All right, I am back with another video, and today we are doing the finale of the companion build series, and I guess the, uh, I guess origin character build series as a whole. We are finally tackling Minsk. Uh, Minsk was an interesting build to come up with, as you know, all of the kind of non-origin companions were, were, you know, designed on uh, my live stream with the community and it was quite funny because whereas we deliberated for ages over characters like Minthara and even Halsin, uh, Minsk was very very easy because I kind of already had an idea in mind and everyone else was immediately sold on it. I knew that obviously Minsk was going to be a ranger in some form and I think everyone is also probably going to find it quite obvious that he's also a barbarian in some form as well, that just makes sense. But then I had a thought. Mitsk's whole thing is that he's a ranger, he's, you know, quite a strong physical fighter, but he's also got a companion unique to him, that being Boo, the miniature giant space hamster. Now, with Boo, I kind of thought, hey, wouldn't it be funny to make Minsk a Beastmaster Ranger, except he is just the muscle. It is actually Boo summoning his friends who are the animal companions. Now, initially when we came up with this build on stream, we decided on a um, level 8 beast, uh, Beastmaster Ranger mixed with a level 4 Berserker Barbarian. But I've done some testing. I've done a lot of testing with this build at various levels, with different mixes, a 6-6 six, six split, a 2-10 uh, split, both ways. I've looked into it a bunch of different times, like, what balance of Barbarian and Ranger works, especially with Beastmaster. Because Beastmaster is a bit strange when you try to multiclass with it, because a lot of the power of that class comes from the Animal Companion. And you will find that the more levels you take out of Ranger, the less effective that Animal Companion is going to be, to the point where, honestly, it's not exactly worth it. Now, as I said, we have originally surmised that a level 8 uh, Beastmaster and a level 4 Barbarian should be good enough. But unfortunately, with my testing, I found that not really to be the case in Act 3. At least from my own testing purposes. As you know, I test all of these builds solo. And you'll be seeing some combat footage now of what I ended up finally deciding on. And it ended up being a bit more simple than I would have liked, but hey ho. Uh, you kind of. But I find that maybe if this build kind of went with a team, it might work a bit better. But this build definitely is less effective solo. Uh, the version I am showing in this video is the one that got the best test results playing solo against some different encounters, and the one encounter that I'm showing on the screen now is the one that I felt kind of worked best for the character, you know, you're fighting the ball cultists, and um, it had the best performance overall, I mean, it's a simpler encounter, but hey, what are you going to do, I was testing for ages on my usual Steel Watch of Flaming Fist encounters, and got mixed results overall, some fights went really well, some fights went really badly, there was no real consistency to it. So I think I will go forward with this. I'll show you the build that I have prepared today, which I think is the best balance of everything that we're trying to achieve with this build, and I'll quickly go over that. Obviously, we want Beastmaster Rage compa uh, Companions, B, we want some level of Barbarian for the Rage, and 3, we want to be able to throw Boo effectively, which is going to cause some decisions with this build to be a bit strange, but you'll see what I mean as we get to it. So, without further ado, let's get into the build. Now, you can choose to start off with Ranger or Barbarian in this build. It doesn't really matter. For the most part, it comes out the same in the wash, because when you play as Minsk, he already joins your party at an extremely high level. In fact, I think when I recruited him in my initial playthrough, I got him, he was level 12, while the rest of my party was only 10. So... You basically have full access to this build the, the very moment you recruit Minsk. So the level order doesn't matter, and since he's obtained an Act 3, uh, I don't, you don't need to worry about equipment throughout the playthrough of the game, you just need to use stuff that you mainly would find around Act 3. Maybe there's some earlier game stuff that you can pick up for the future. We'll go over that in the equipment section. Uh, but for now, with Minsk, so again, you can choose Barbarian or Ranger, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that will really change for us is the saving for us at skill proficiencies. I personally like playing with Ranger, because the only kind of thing that starting with Barbarian would give us over Ranger is Constitution saving through proficiency. But we, by the end of this build, we're going to have pretty damn good Constitution saves 
anyway, so I don't feel like Barbarian is necessary, and Ranger would give us a bit more things at level 1, so we're going to be starting there. At level 1 of Ranger, we're going to be able to pick up a favoured enemy, and I quite like picking up Bounty Hunter. It gives us proficiency in Investigation, which may not exactly fit for Minsk, but hey, I think it's quite fun. But it allows us to uh, get impose disadvantage on saving throws against creatures that we hit with ensnaring strike uh i've worded that poorly basically when we hit with ensnaring strike they have a disadvantage on the save it's not disadvantage on all saves while ensnared so basically what that means is when we use ensnaring strike we're going to be able to trap our foes way easier that way they're not a moving target so it's easier to throw boo at them as for our natural explorer as well beast tamer seems like an obvious choice getting a second animal companion with fine familiar but Summoning Boo in this game is also considered fine familiar, and they don't stack. Same with uh, Scratch. So, unfortunately, this doesn't really work for us. You can still take it later on in the build, if you feel like since um, you can only summon Boo once per short rest, you essentially get two familiars per short rest. But I don't think Minsk would cheat on Boo, so I'm just going to pick Wasteland Wanderer of Fire for, the most, uh, for resistance to the most common magic damage type in the game. As for our ability scores, they're going to look a bit strange, but it will make sense. Strength and Dexterity are both at 16, strength for our main kind of attack rolls, and Dexterity for decent AC. Constitution is at 8 because we are going to be using an item to boost this up to very high levels, you probably already know what it is, but for spoiler reasons I won't get into it just yet. Intelligence is at 8 for obvious reasons, Wisdom is at 14 because despite everything I do think Minsk is rather... Well, I guess wise isn't the word, but he's very worldly. Uh, the way he kind of approaches situations does speak with someone with a lot of combat experience and a lot of experience with the wider world, just not a lot of smarts. Wisdom isn't smarts, though. That's intelligence. And besides, we want wisdom for spellcasting sometimes, if we decide to use spellcasting, which we probably won't, but hey, it's still good for those saving throws. And charisma is at 12 because Minsk is just that kind of lovable guy. I don't want to say idiot, that's a bit insulting, but let's be real. So... You know, I feel like a charisma stat of 12 does make sense. As for our skill proficiencies, as I said, Ranger does give us quite a lot, and since Minsk is a human with the Folk Hero background, he's going to get a few already. Folk Hero is going to give us access to Animal Handling and Survival, and Human is going to give us access to any feat, and so I've picked Persuasion because, come on, how could you resist Minsk? Like, really? And then, of course, for Ranger, I'm going to pick a few stats. Athletics is going to be great so that we're not getting shoved, and then if we decide to throw enemies, since we will have high strength with this build, we have a higher chance to succeed. Uh, nature does make sense for him. I mean, I would personally think so, but I could also see insight, as I feel like people would have a hard... It's not like he's good at telling when people are lying, but I think Minsk would absolutely have... I, I, I'm wording this poorly. I think I don't think that Minsk would have a better time telling that people are lying, but I think people would have a harder time lying to Minsk, if that makes sense, kind of giving him a higher insight score unintentionally. And finally, Perception. We have Decent Wisdom, and Perception is a great skill to have, so we'll pick it up here. Next up, at level 2, I'm just quickly going to show off the multi-class thing quickly. We're going to be obviously taking a dip into Barbarian. Barbarian is going to give us range as well as unarmored defense. Since we're going to have high dex and constitution with this build, I figured it made sense to get Barbarian's unarmored defense as early as possible, because you know what? it's going to give us much more defense than we would normally have while still being able to wear clothing. And Rage is going to give us a bit of resistance to uh, physical attacks, advantage on strength checks and saves, and an additional two damage with melee, improvised, and throwing weapons. So, throwing Boo is going to deal a little bit more damage. Now, here's the thing with this build. I found that in my testing, the most successful versions of this build were ones that only took one level of Barbarian. Basically, getting that extra bit of physical resistance is nice, getting the slight boost to our throws, but overall focusing mostly on the Ranger stuff to make our Animal Companion as powerful as possible. However, if you find that you're playing in a well-balanced party that is able to spread the damage quite thinly, then I think the going to level 4 of Barbarian and level 8 of Beastmaster will work absolutely fine, but in my testing environment it did not perform as well. But again, using a proper full party, maybe my own Origin and Companion builds alongside this one, with, you know, maybe one of my main character builds as well, I think this build would do fine in a 4-8 split, but again, with my testing purposes, I've decided to go for a 1-11 split here, because I found that to be the most effective, and it still gave us the most overall feel of Minsk, but again, Berserker Barbarian would make sense being able to throw a bit more, but unfortunately, Boo also doesn't last very long in combat, 
And if you went for a full Tavern Brawler throwing build, using Tavern Brawler and throwing build, Boo actually hurts Boo. For some reason, the Tavern Brawler damage is still added when Boo is not supposed to take throw damage. Definitely something Larian needs to fix. And I didn't want to make just another throwing build because I've already made a Berserker Barbarian throwing build this week week and before that was another type of throwing build i've made a lot of throwing builds so i've decided the 111 split is what we're going to be doing today and i think it works really nicely it still gives us everything we want for minsk but keeps him powerful you'll see so at level two of ranger we're going to be able to pick up a fighting style and minsk is using two-handed weapons and unfortunately we don't get great weapon master here uh, I don't have a ranged weapon on this build, but if you did, archery would be ideal. And if you decided to maybe do dual wielding or one-handing, you absolutely could go with these, but I'm just going to pick defense for now, for that slight buff to our armor class, making us harder to hit. And as for our first range of spells, I'm going to pick up Speak with Animals to be able to speak with animals, because Minsk literally does that, and Ensnaring Strike so that we can actually gain a use out of that feature we took at level 1. Now, obviously we cannot cast spells while raging, but I feel like rage isn't something you're going to have up all the time. I think it's going to come up in specific situations where you need to tank but if you're up against enemies that do a lot of non-physical damage maybe a bunch of mages or something like that you may find more value in just sticking with outrage just keeping the unarmored defense and then just casting spells instead like ensnaring strike At range of level 3, we get to pick our subclass, and we already know we're going with Beastmaster. Beastmaster is going to give us a variat variable smorgasbord of Boo's friends that we can summon during battle. Reminder, Minsk isn't summoning these, Boo is. This is going to give us access to a Dire Raven, a Wolf, a Bear, a Boar, or a Spider. My personal favourite animal companion is the Boar for this build, because a Boar can also rage like a Barbarian and get a bunch of Barbarian-related features, including uh, the Frenzied Strike from Berserk. Berserker Barbarian, so if you go with the Boar Companion, you're technically still getting Berserker Barbarian on this build, which I find extremely funny, and which is, again, why I love this type of build, because a Boar with Minsk, it's a beast after his own heart, so I feel like it makes perfect sense. Also, imagine Boo charging into battle on the back of a Boar that's charging and raging out. I think that's so funny. <laughs> Anyways, as for our spells, we do get to pick another one, and I'm going to be grabbing Hunter's Mark, allowing us to use our concentration to do an extra 1d6 slashing damage to an enemy of our choice. At range of level 4, we are going to be getting our first feat, and I'm going to recommend taking an ability score improvement and bumping this up to 18, the strength. Uh, again, strength is our main attacking stat, and with the equipment that we have, once you're at 18 strength, you'll automatically have 20, because our armor boosts it by 2. At Ranger level 5, we are going to be grabbing extra attack, which is nice, we want that. We're also going to be getting level 2 spells, as well as another subclass feature, Companion's Bond. Basically, now our proficiency bonus is added to the armor class and damage rolls of our Companion, which is nice. As I said, we get access to level 2 spells, but there's none here that immediately stand out to me. So, it's up to you to pick up what you like. I would say protection from poison is probably quite nice, because if we combine this with the other Wasteland Wanderer features, we can get resistance to fire, cold, and poison by the time this build is done, so I'm going to be picking that up here. At level 6, we do get to pick our next dosage of Favoured Enemy and Natural Explorer. With Favoured Enemy, you kind of have some options here. Ranger Knight doesn't really work for us because we don't want to be wearing heavy armor. Sanctified Stalker would be cool, but Sacred Flame isn't going to work well with our slightly lower wisdom. Uh, Keeper of the Veil would give you Arcana proficiency and protection from evil and good, which I don't think Mints would use. So the final thing is Mage Breaker which gives us True Strike, the best cantrip in the game. And Mage Breaker is also going to give us proficiency in Arcana as well, which again, doesn't quite work for Minsk, but the idea of him just like get, just hating mages and fighting so many that he kind of knows how magic works. I mean, this role isn't going to be great with our low intelligence, but I think it's kind of funny. As for Natural Explorer, I'm going to pick Wasteland Wanderer Cold. Now we have permanent fire and cold resistance, and with protection from poison, we also get that poison resistance as well. That's three resistances, which I like. Next up at Ranger level 7, we are going to be getting another spell, and really, again, it's entirely up to you what you want to pick. Long Strider is nice because it will give us a bit of extra movement speed, both in and out of range, so we might as well pick it up. 
at Ranger level 8, we are going to be getting Land Stride Difficult Terrain, meaning the Difficult Terrain no longer slows us down. We are also going to be picking up another feat. Now, my build that I've been using for the combat footage and all that did use Great Weapon Master. I mean, we're using a two-handed weapon, we might as well. When I was testing uh, Barbarian levels, we used Reckless Attack, which obviously would give us advantage to hit, which made this hit way more often. However, with this new version of the build, I would recommend if you're going to pick up Great Weapon Master to use the Risky Ring to give you advantage as well. And our saving throws are going to be pretty good with Barbarian and our equipment, so you don't have to worry about the downside too much. So I've recommended you can pick up the Risky Ring in the uh, description, however it would kind of break the rules of the Origin Character Series, where I'm trying not to repeat any equipment so that you can uh, use these uh, builds in one playthrough if you want. So while I am going to be choosing Great Weapon Master here, make sure you've got the uh, feature or the item in order to make it work, so either Reckless Attack or the Risky Ring. But Great Weapon Master is absolutely worth it. Uh, get landing a critical hit allows us to make a melee weapon attack as a bonus action, which is great, or killing a target also allows us to do it. And as well, we do do an extra 10 damage at the cost of a negative 5 to the attack roll. Our equipment, and again, advantage can help offset that penalty quite nicely. At level 9 of uh, Beastmaster Ranger, we are also going to be able to pick up level 3 spells. And I've always liked picking up Conjure Barrage, because when do we ever go this high in Ranger? Conjure Barrage just allows us to kind of make a kind of cone attack with our weapon, in this case our big axe or sword, and as such doing a little bit of extra damage and attacking enemies in a wider area. And at level 10, we do actually get more of these, which is quite nice. So it's entirely up to you what you want to pick here. It really doesn't matter. I guess pick up Ranger Knight so that you can use Heavy Armor. Perhaps you're not too into the whole idea of raging that much, so perhaps Heavy Armor would be more efficient for you. It's entirely up to you. But this would give us History Proficiency, which again, Minsk has been around a while. I think it makes sense for him to have that. You're also going to get Hide in Plain Sight, allowing you to camouflage yourself with your environment to become invisible and gain a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks, so long as you stand still. Minsk has mastered the art of standing so still that he becomes invisible. <laughs> Why does that fit so well? Actually, now that I think about it, Minsk and Drax would get along very well. <laughs> and finally, we do get to pick up another one of these Natural Explorer features, and since we already have Poison Resistance in some form, Beast Tamer, just to get that extra fine familiar once per short rest, can make sense here. I mean, it's the last thing I would personally pick. I mean, you could get Sleight of Hand Proficiency, which would be nice. We're going to have a decent Dexterity score, but... It's entirely up to you. And finally, at level 11, we do get the maximum uh, feature for our subclass, Bestial Fury. Your bond with your companion is deepened, allowing them to have an extra attack. Not mentioned here, we also have now hit the um, maximum cap for our uh, companion's HP, making them a lot higher, as well as gaining a bunch of new extra attacks and features for them as well. And for our spells, I mean, it's entirely up to you what you want to pick here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just grab Goodberry. Because Boo needs his snacks. How else would he grow strong and become a big space hamster? I really should stop doing voice impressions. <laughs> Anyways, that is the build. Just going to take a quick short rest. There we go. Uh, with this build, you are going to be getting a ton of stuff. You're going to get two summons, that being Boo and an Animal Companion, which are both going to be able to pull their weight, at least somewhat for Boo, in battle. You're also going to get a ton of, a, you're basically just going to be getting a ton of HP, thanks to our, um, you know, higher level, higher level constitution, which I'll be showing off in a minute, as well as just some generically helpful spells, and the ability to be a bit more tanky with Rage. I mean, again, this is a pretty standard Ranger build. Again, if this guild is in a balanced party that can support it, I still recommend that 4-8 split, but for the testing purposes of making the strongest version of this build, this is what works. And trust me, it works quite well, especially with the animal companions, and I'll specifically be showing off the boar later. But let's get into the build. To start, we have... I'm going to angle the camera so this is a bit more... No, nope. Minsk, where are you? Right, fine. That, stay still. There we go, perfect. Anyways, as for the equipment, like I said, I've not provided Act 1 or 2 or like early game alternatives, because really, we don't need them. You're going to have this guy at max level and max 3, so I get to kind of just go crazy. Now again, a quick reminder, I am under a limitation here that I'm not allowed to repeat any equipment that I used in the Origin build series up till now, and since Minsk is the last character, the pickings were 
slim, but we still had a bunch of equipment that I was quite surprised I hadn't used, but I thought would make sense for him, so here we are. Starting off with our choice of weapon, you have three options here. Now, I, from my understanding, Mint's throughout history has always been known to wield a greatsword, and as such, what, a, what would be a better greatsword than the sword of his greatest foe, the Sword of Chaos? A greatsword wielded by a longtime foe of Minsk, but I won't say for spoiler reasons. Uh, it deals an extra 1d4 necrotic damage on a hit, and also, whenever you do attack, you get, regain 1 to 6 hit points. It's a plus 2 weapon, so it fits quite nicely. This is probably one of the stronger options for Minsk. I feel like it would work perfectly for him, and it would be kind of a nice combination, but you may think that Minsk won't want to use such an evil weapon, and as such I have a couple of other options. First up is my kind of second choice, Foe Breaker. This weapon will ignore bludgeoning damage resistance, it's a plus 2 weapon, and whenever you miss an attack you deal 5 bludgeoning damage anyway, so you're always going to be doing damage with this build, and being able to ignore resistance is always nice. With Great Weapon Master this is dealing a decent chunk of damage, again ignoring that resistance is pretty good. And finally, my personal choice, Sethan. Sethan is a great axe. It deals 1d12 plus 7 damage, which is nice. It is a plus 2 weapon, but it comes with a couple of abilities that I think really make it stand out. First up is Sethan Spiritual Great Axe, allowing you to summon a level 6 max level Spiritual Great Axe, dealing a bunch of extra force damage and basically being another summon that you can use during a fight. But the final option is what me and the community kind of agreed is the best, is Sethan Reduce. Make a creature smaller. The weapon, its weapon steal a 1d4 less damage and it has disadvantage on strength checks and saving throws. Basically, you make an, an enemy small and then you throw them instead of Boo. Just chuck them out of the arena. So long! <laughs> <laughs> it was too perfect not to include, and I really like the kind of vibe of Minsk with this great axe. I feel like it works perfectly. So Sethin would be my personal choice, but either of these two weapons I think would also work nicely for him. So, let's get into the other equipment. First up, the Horns of the Berserker. He's literally a Berserker. Minsk is described as a Rashomon Berserker, so it makes total sense for him to have the Horns of the Berserker. So, when, uh, basically you gain a plus two bonus to attack rules when attacking creatures that have already taken damage, that's going to help offset Great Weapon Master as well. Unarmed and melee attacks you you, attack, you deal uh, will do an additional uh, two necrotic damage as long as you don't have your full health. Uh, if you don't deal any damage this turn, you take one to four necrotic damage at the end of your turn. So, basically, keep attacking, which is exactly what Minsk would do. Click your protection for a little bit of extra AC. The Mighty Cloth is my uh, clothing of choice here. We gain Bull's Strength, which means we have advantage on strength checks, and our carrying capacity is doubled. I mean, you can see here, it's pretty high. That part we don't care so much about, though. The parts that we do care about are as follows. Our strength score increases by 2, giving us a maximum of 20, which is great. That gives us extra room to put feats or other ability score improvements in, and still have 20 strength at the end of the day. Unwavering Bull is interesting, though. You cannot be pushed against your will and have advantage on saving throws against being restrained. Nothing can stop Minsk once he gets going, and I felt like that made perfect sense for him. Again, Rage already gives us advantage on saving throws, uh, strength saves, but I guess having the extra bonus to being to going uh, on saving throws against being restrained is also nice. But another fun feature here is Bull Rush. Charge forward and possibly knock back your foes 3 meters, dealing in a bit of bludgeoning damage, knock him, knocking enemies prone, and not provoking opportunity attacks. This is so funny to me because, again, with the boar companion, who also has a move like this, it's so funny just to see Minsk's kind of parallels between the companion that you will summon and him himself. And again, if we're going at this from the perspective of Minsk is a mount for Boo, which he himself proclaims, then kind of getting the ability to, like, charge and do all this other stuff just feels... Kind of on theme with that. I was surprised how well this fit uh, Minsk as a whole, so make sure to pick it up during your journey. Next up, I'll go over these two together. The Gloves of Uninhibited Kashiga, which are going to give us an additional 1d4 damage with throw attacks, and the, uh, the Ring of Flinging, which is going to do the same with throwing. Basically, this just means that we get a 2d4 bonus on any throw attacks we do. This includes throwing Boo or anything else we can find. Again, this didn't end up being a full throwing build, but if you decide to go for those Berserker Barbarian levels and pick up even Tavern Brawler, if you don't worry, if you don't care about throwing Boo too much, then, well, obviously these are going to help you do just an absolute buttload of damage, so again, play with the levels as you see fit. 
but we do have an option for throwing that's a bit unconventional, the slinging shoes. They return to its odor when thrown, and on hit, on a, on a hit, they deal two to eight psychic damage. So when all else fails, Minsk pulls the absolute most big-brained comedy move and throws his own shoe, which magically comes back to him, dealing all the damage from our glove and ring, and also dealing the extra psychic damage on top. It's just dumb. It's a piece of equipment that I hadn't used yet that you can get in Act 3, which again is when you're going to be playing as Minsk. And as such, it just felt super fun to pick these up and have them. It, it fits so on, on theme for like the kind of comedic aspect of Minsk, but I just had to include it. Next up for the accessories, we have the Amulet of Greater Health. This is what allows us to set our constitution to 8, and as such, gain a 23 in constitution. Also, advantage on constitution saving throw checks, which is why I said starting as Barbarian didn't matter as much. This is going to give us a massive pool of health to be able to be tanky for the team, even if we're not always ranging, so this is very nice to have. And we've already gone over the Ring of Flinging, so I won't mention it again, but we do have the Ring of Truthfulness. Remember when I said earlier that people just can't lie to Minsk? Well, the Ring of Truthfulness makes it even more so, gaining advantage on insight checks. It's just a bit of fun. Again, I was running out of equipment here. If you're not beholden to the same kind of equipment rules that I was following, then feel free to change this for something else. But once it kind of got pointed out flavor-wise, I just had to include it on this build. Speaking of, that is the build, but I will quickly be going over the main attraction of this build, Boo himself. Boo, as previously stated, is a miniature giant space hamster, and he comes with a unique, some unique effects. He has a bite attack, which allows him to do 2d4 plus 5 piercing damage. Uh, he can hide and do all the normal companion stuff, but he has the unique feature of when he is thrown, he, uh, he has immunity to throw damage, unless you're using Tavern Brawler, that still needs to be fixed. And when he has thrown that enemies, he literally goes for the eyes, famous quote, and can inflict the blinded status condition on a failed saving throw, meaning that he is quite a powerful little weapon. Unfortunately, his 20 HP means that he's not going to last very long in Act 3, which is very unfortunate, but if you have a cleric in your party that can cast things like Heroes Feast and Aid, he will last a lot longer, and he's definitely someone you want to keep around. Heading back to the whole Beastmaster Ranger thing, let's grab Boo's friend real quick. Again, we have the bear, the boar, the spider, the, the raven, and the wolf. My personal choice, though, is the boar, so let's take a look. The boar is going to come with a bunch of unique features. At this level, he can both dash, disengage, and help as a bonus action, which is great. Uh, he gains access to a task attack, which will deal 1d6 plus 2 damage. We also gain the boar charge, which is a bit similar to boar's rush. It'll deal 1d4, allowing us to charge through enemies, knocking them prone, and doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. He has the rage ability, which allows him to go into a frenzy, increasing his size and becoming stronger through raw anger. His melee attacks deal an additional two slashing damage and he gains resistance to physical damage and can use frenzied strike. Frenzied strike will allow him to gore an enemy as a bonus action, so he's going to get three attacks per turn. This is Berserker Barbarian in beast form, and I love it. There's the Frenzy Strike as well, and we also get Kick Up Muck, allowing us to slather a target in Muck and slow them down. The effect, and basically means we can cast Slow in kind of a cone in front of us. Yes, it's a deck save, but if this goes off, it's going to be pretty powerful overall. Like, having Slow in addition to all the Rage stuff? This guy's strong and probably one of the most underrated animal companions. People talk about the bear quite a lot because you can literally make a bear army. And also, like, the uh, the raven for the blindness and the wolf because, I don't know, you're making an Artorias build. Uh, but the boar, I think, is severely underrated. And I honestly really, really wish it got more love because it is my personal favorite, especially after making this build. But yeah, that is everything. Uh, the combat footage will be playing again now, and it'll give me some time to kind of talk about everything like with this build. Definitely one of the strangest builds I've ever had to make. Uh, again, the levels, again, if you have a balanced party, then you are free to mess around with the levels a bit more, as your animal companion will be a bit less important for overall tanking. So I would say build a strong balanced party, definitely bring a cleric to get those aid casts up to give both Boo and your animal companion more HP, and it will definitely allow you to play around a bit more. And in that case, I would say that the boar companion is still the best, because one of the biggest draws of getting 
um, the kind of uh, level 11 uh, beast, Beastmaster feature is that extra attack, but of course the boar can attack as a bonus action while raging, so you're still going to be getting those two attacks with the boar regardless. Uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously, again, play around with the levels, see which ratio of barbarian to ranger works best for you. Uh, for me, it was the 11-1 split. Again, I feel like it still gets everything that we love about Minsk, just maybe not as much barbarian stuff. But again, Minsk was always more of a ranger, and I feel like this build suits him really nicely as a result. Uh, as f yeah, and I think you'll see in the combat footage here, again, this build does really, really well. Both Minsk and the Boar were just charging through the enemies. Even Boo was putting up a really good fight for a while. He was kind of attacking the main guy, keeping him busy, and was dodging quite a few attacks. It, it kind of surprised me. And yeah, I mean, it was a more simple encounter anyway, but the way this build was able to handle it was pretty nice. It's the same one I used for my Jahira build, so I feel like it makes sense all around. Uh, as for end of video stuff, not really too much to talk about here. Uh, stuff, I mean, things are still chugging along as normal. I don't really plan on making any big changes at the moment. If you weren't aware, uh, if you haven't somehow seen the news already, the Sunday build, the weekend builds that I've been posting, uh, I've stopped doing for now, so you're only getting three videos a week again with a live stream on the weekends. And for this weekend, I was kind of wondering if I have an opportunity to do a live stream. I might be busy. I haven't announced a release date yet. I think I, I was thinking of maybe playing a little bit of Elden Ring. Uh, there's been a growing interest in me featuring it on the channel, so I thought maybe a live stream to kind of test the waters, and I was actually thinking of maybe trying to recreate my old invasion build. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I did actually make an Elden Ring invasion video, kind of like the types that, uh, I guess, Prod or somebody would or would used to make. You know, it's a bit of a compilation, uh, with, you know, fun music and, like, funny edits here and there. And it was an interesting build where it was low level, it was level 25 with a plus one weapon, but I had both of the explosion tiers for the Flask of Physics. Uh, if you're interested in it, the video is, it's an older one on my channel, but it's still one of my favourites. Just look up Elden Ring on the channel and you'll find it quite a, right away. Uh, definitely one of the videos I'm most proud of, actually, in terms of pure editing. Um, and I kind of wanted to see if I could recreate that build on the PS on the PC version, because I used to play on PS5, but now I've switched to PC, and I've got the PC version of Elden Ring in anticipation of Shadow of the Earth Tree. So I was thinking, hey, maybe I could try recreating that build on stream. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the second exploding tier doesn't come up until one of the most endgame areas, so I would have to get through the game with essentially a starting character so it'd be an interesting challenge run and i'll have to employ some strategies i used to get that build in the first place once again so i think it'd be a fun time i think we'll i think it would just be a nice kind of more casual stream where i can kind of show off what my build making process kind of was uh for that game because obviously when i was playing on ps5 i didn't have access to mods and I used to make builds for Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring all the time before I started on Baldur's Gate 3. So, I, and like I said, I'm interested in bringing Elden Ring to the channel in full force, especially closer to the release date of the DLC. So, let me know what you guys would potentially think of that. Uh, anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough to let the combat footage finish, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.